And now to discuss this further, Fahad Abdul Masood joins me live from Muscat. He's an aviation subject matter analyst and aircraft accident investi investigator. Great to have you again here with us on TRT World. Now, considering the aircraft was a Boeing 777-300, correct me if I'm wrong, a model known for its uh, reliability and robustness, how could it, ha how could it have uh, suffered a sudden 6,000-foot descent within mere minutes? And what does this say about the aircraft's uh, ability to withstand unexpected weather phenomenon? Well, the aircraft doesn't really have a role to play here. It is the weather, the meteorological phenomenon that was experienced uh, by this Boeing 777-300ER was all to do with something that we call as air pocket. Um, air pocket, unlike the world, is nothing more than what turbulence generates. Um, in this present situation and the weather picture that I was analyzing in the recent uh, couple of hours, uh, the periphery of one of the cumulonimbus cloud or the CB cell that we have, which is a rainmaker or a thunder cloud. <clears throat> so what's the reason why this air pocket was generated? Uh, there is a major difference between the air density, which results into the air pressure, which in turn indicates the lift generation capacity of the wind. Uh, or the airframe itself. So it was a mix of a few temperature variations, air density, pressure differences, which resulted into this reduction of lift generation and the aircraft dropped from 37,000 feet to 31,000 in a matter of three minutes, a whopping 2,000 feet per minute or 33.33 feet per second uh, was lost by the aircraft. So very disturbing for the pilots, the flight deck managers, the mm -hmm. cabin crew, as well as the passengers involved. So a lot to do with weather phenomenon rather than the aircraft itself. Okay. Any other aircraft would have experienced the same. Now, Fahad, the, this is something that I asked you earlier as well. See, air crash, uh, they are very uncommon. You hear about one happen uh, maybe uh, every two, three years. But turbulence is, for example, I have faced turbulence on a flight many times. In fact, I have faced a severe turbulence on multiple occasions, and I'm sure those who are watching us right now have uh, as well. And this is primarily why this particular incident is very concerning. So what is the prob probability when uh, someone is flying uh, cruise on cruising altitude that something like uh, this could happen to a passenger or a pilot? Okay, so the climate change uh, is inducing a weather pattern flow variation across the world on a global scale. El Nino, La Nina are two weather phenomena which are really affecting this specific region where we, expe we experience this 6,000 feet drop. Uh, if I were to put this in numbers, uh, the probability of this thing happening is now greater within this region of Southeast Asia. Once again, the rain, rainy season is setting in. We are expecting more CB cell to generate subtropical jet streams to move further north, which is in turn going to generate greater effect of air pockets or variance in lift generation capacity. Uh, that being said, uh, it is still one of the safest modes to travel. There are avionics, which I have gone across in the previous 24 hours as weather radars or high-end weather radars, uh, which can identify uh, to a better degree, with not 100% correctness, but better degree of predictability. And as we are in the world of data, data from uh, weather station, radar, radar stations, satellite, sat-nav systems can also facilitate this. Um, so okay. it is less probable than what it's going to be, but rest, yes, with the climate change taking place, we can expect this to be happening a lot more, especially in this region. You know, uh, Father, I'm, I'm sure you are aware as well, there are m many anxious uh, flyers uh, out there. For example, I'm, a, I'm one, and yesterday when we spoke, I posted our interview on uh, social media and I got so many messages uh, I'm so scared uh, I'm so scared of flying now I don't know how I'll be able to board a, a, a plane again what would you like to say to those uh, people like me for example that is it is still uh, the safest mode of travel 
It is absolutely. Uh, if I were to give this a number, uh, it would be 10 raised to the power minus 9 probability of something like this happening ever again. Uh, so uh, it is one of the most risk mitigated, most uh, regulated industry of the world. It is not going to be an everyday affair, but the solution to this challenge, as we discussed previously as well, is please wear your seatbelt no matter which scenario circumstance you're in, if you are sitting in your chair. Yes, if you want to visit the loo or go to have a drink or maybe stretch your legs, that's a separate predicament. But otherwise, wear your seatbelt, you will never have a problem and you will always be successful and your landings will always equal your takeoffs. Fahad Masood, thanks very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Fascinating insights. Thanks a lot once again.